Time another tough day for Wall Street legend and billionaire Carl Icahn. His company Icahn Enterprises dropped another 20 percent. Sell-off comes after that bombshell report from Hindenburg Research. The short seller accused Icahn Enterprises of being overvalued and alleged its financial operations are, quote, Ponzi-like. Ouch. In a statement, Carl Icahn said that he stands by all of his financial disclosures. Carl Icahn's fortune has taken a major hit since that short seller report. Icahn's net worth is reportedly plunged by more than $10 billion in just the last day. For reaction, let's bring in activist short seller Dan David. He is the founder of Wolfpack Research. He's exposed billions of dollars in fraud over investors over the last 12 years. Much of that, by the way, coming from China, which we will get to in this, in this segment as well. I appreciate you coming on. What do you make of this? You know, I, Icon's usually the attacker, not the attackee. Well, thanks for having me on, Brian. It's, uh, it's good to see you again. Uh, yeah, well, look, uh, I think he's earned it. Uh, you know, I look at this report and uh, it rings very true. I think it's down for a second day because that was, a, in my opinion, a very weak, uh, condescending and glib response uh, to simply say that, uh, you know, Hindenburg put out this report uh, for self-serving reasons and to make money. You know, Carl used to know that that was actually the definition of investing uh, when he was breaking up TW and her parts uh, or short squeezing Herbalife. So this is what happens when when you conduct your business this way, and I do believe from reading this report, it's been mismanaged. Yeah, I mean, it's a, listen, Carl Icahn is one of the most successful investors of all time. He is certainly... Always will be. Yeah, and, he, and he's been around uh, for a while. Have you had a chance to dig into the allegations themselves? If you looked at IEP, what do you think? You know, because it's really kind of just a, a, a almost a roll-up of a bunch of different investments, is it not? Yeah, well, look, this is... This is endemic in our investing environment right now. Like, you know, we put out a short call on uh, B. Riley three months ago, did a lot of the same things here uh, where you're mismarking. Uh, and to be clear, like comparing Carl Icahn to Bryant Riley is like comparing Shaquille O'Neal to Spud Webb. There's, you know, but that's just saying it's happening top to bottom in this market right now. Uh, there's level three mismarking uh, of assets, level two, happening very often. And in this case, there's even some level one free trading uh, stocks that they're just marking up hundreds mm -hmm. of percent. Uh, wh why? Why are we letting him get away with that? And I'm glad he's being called out for it here. The other part of it that's, that's endemic in this market is there are a great many companies that are not throwing off free cash flow, yet they're borrowing money or doing at the money offerings, selling, you know, selling units mm -hmm. uh, to pay a dividend largely to themselves because they own most of the units in their company. So they're paying themselves this money. Yeah. Uh, and it's borrowed money that's going to be paid back at a higher interest rate. And if you're not throwing off free cash flow, how are you going to pay it back? Uh, yeah. Same thing with stock buybacks. I'm a big fan of stock buybacks or paying a dividend if the cash flow supports it. Supports and it doesn't. It. Dan, I want to. You're known. It was actually a documentary. I think my friend uh, Herb Greenberg was in the documentary where you talk about yeah. Chinese great stuff. By the way, everybody should go back and watch it. We are we there again? Top financial, okay? Top financial yeah. trader favorite up another sixty percent today. Now, if you go to Top Financial's website, it's actually it's based in Hong Kong. It's got a different name. It's like Zhao Yang or something financial. Sure. I, their, their, their address is on the website. It's like room 181, 1101 Connaught Road West. When you look at that on Google Maps, it may, I yeah. may be wrong. I want to be clear, but it appears to be an apartment yeah. hotel. Yeah. Or, like a, an extended well, stay residence where the headquarters of this company may be. I mean, what, what, <laughs> how do we get here again? Uh, I don't think it's as, as, as pervasive as it was simply because we really cleared out a lot of the trash, but you're right, Brian, here it comes again. I was surprised to look at this and see there's a wave of these companies coming and they're getting into this main stock vibe. And I just want to be very clear with retail investors that investing in top financial, in my opinion, or any of these other companies that we're going to talk about is like playing Russian roulette with a loaded gun. Okay. Top financial is 90% insider held. They control whatever happens to that stock price because they own 90% of it. So you're just in there and you're out. And if you're out at the wrong time, you lose. 
And, yeah. you know, you careful. can't say Brian didn't tell you. You can't say I didn't tell you. Uh, this is this is not even gambling anymore. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And why are we letting companies, especially from China, where we understand so much for the China Hustle documentary, right? It's still not illegal for a Chinese citizen to steal from a U.S. citizen. Yeah. Still. So if, they, if we catch them stealing... They're going to keep the money they stole. We can the do one, nothing about the, it. The one thing I love what you did in the documentary is you actually like looked at these companies and like put cameras on like the trucks to see if they had a business. I just like to start by looking at their publicly available headquarters. Some of these billion dollar companies are, are based like above an auto body shop. I mean, it's all on Google Maps. Dan David, thank you very much. All right.